Hello, so it's uh, been a while since I did a somewhat serious video on the Jeep. I think it's been going pretty good. But uh, winter is coming and uh, it's time to change the fuel filter, which uh, on the diesel lives in the engine valley. You can see the two lines going on to it. So we got to pull this out. There's a, a couple reasons we're doing this job. So for one, every once in a while I'll see a pool of diesel sitting on top of the uh, filter. So it's been leaking a bit, and I've also had issues with uh, taking uh, quite a bit of cranking to get the vehicle to start. So it kind of makes me think I'm losing prime, because I don't have any codes for the glow plugs. And you'll smell diesel when you're driving around once in a while. And then something has started happening lately on the back of the Jeep. I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, the tailgate is all covered in oil, sort of fuel or something, you've got to figure this out. So check all the usual suspects. Differential's not leaking. The wheel seals aren't leaking. Pinion's not leaking. Check the shocks on the front and the back. They're not leaking. Check the brake fluid and it's good. It hasn't moved. Check the transmission fluid in the last video. It could be down five millimeters, which would be a part of a liter. I'm not too sure if that uh, is where I left it the last time I checked it or not. Checked the power steering fluid, it's fine. Checked uh, around the oil filter, nothing going on here. Checked the uh, filler, everything is good here. Checked uh, the transmission breather is here. The front differential breather is that there. So that's all good. So checked all the oil containing areas. The uh, fan on this thing is hydraulic and it's clean. Tried to look at the uh, coolers on the front. Everything seemed to be okay. But when you look in here, there's some oil around the turbo. And like I said, the, uh, the filter has obviously been getting oily and dirty. Probably fuel on it more than oil. You look down into the valley in various locations, it's hard to do. But I'm concerned I might have an oil cooler problem starting to begin. So the first step in all of this is to pull the uh, fuel filter out and change it. And do some snooping around in the valley and see if we can find any uh, evidence of leaks there. We'll go underneath and take a look. Front differential is nice and dry. I did a video on that because you have to change the, uh, the fluid in it once in a while. And on top of that, they kind of were prone to leaking from the factory where the uh, cover meets uh, the housing. So we'll see if we can squeeze under here or not, but the uh, the idea here is to go up near the transmission. I guess I'll have to get off the creeper. Crawl under. Just bear it with me. And see if there's any uh, oil coming off the transmission or the transfer case. So it looks good up here. Full tour under here. Hopefully you can see what I'm seeing. But bit of leakage just right here, but nothing serious. Then up here is good. No real obvious uh, source of oil spots for whatever reason. Although maybe the pinion seal is leaking a little bit. Ugh, can't get past the tank. When I bought this vehicle I had the uh, pinion seal changed on it. You kind of see a weep of something there. So maybe I'll take a look at that later if we don't find anything else while we do the video. The fuel tanks are known to leak as the pot, dirt piles up on top of them and they're steel tanks. So 
So that's uh, another issue. That's actually like the cover for the tank. I don't know if you can see it. The tank is up in there. You can kind of see the tank from the wheel well. It's a good spot to look at that. It's a tight squeeze. But looking down here, nothing jumping out at me, but you probably got a better view than I do. Sometimes it'll be pouring out of this hole here and people think it's a, a crankshaft seal, but it's not. There might be my exhaust leak up there. Once in a while you can smell exhaust. You can see up there. Whatever that is, it's wrapped up in some kind of uh, mesh material seems like it's starting to come apart. Actually you can see oil on the bottom of the heads from here. It's oily up. I think that might be an EGR valve or something up there. It's all kind of right near the turbo. It's hard to get to. Anyway, we're gonna do the uh, filter change on this job. So six minutes in, just kind of doing our due diligence, snooping around under here, make sure that uh, it's worth doing the job. In my case, I know it is because it's got enough hours on the uh, fuel filter to do it anyway. Plus, I've been having some issues. There's a uh, oil valve. It doesn't look like it's leaking. So I'll turn this off and we'll uh, get back up to the top of the vehicle and start doing some work. Alright, so I decided to come back here and take a look at this pinion seal. There's a bit of oil underneath of here. And on the uh, corner of the tank is also wet. So this seems like it is probably the uh, the problem that's been going on. So I don't know if I need to get uh, the shaft sleeved or what, because the seal only lasted about two years. And I got the stuff coming on here. When I got the vehicle, the it was all caked all over the place. It was leaking a lot. It uh, seems like we're here again. But we're going to do the uh, fuel filter and also check out the oil cooler valley and investigate that just to make sure that things are looking good there. Because it's fall is here and it's like a 20 hour job if you're a novice is going to do it. So I want to do that before uh, winter hits otherwise I'd end up probably having to pay someone to do it. So uh, now we'll go up to the uh, engine bay. All right, so to do this job, you're gonna to need to have a few different supplies. So one, you'll need to get a, uh, a filter. This is a Mercedes filter here. It comes with two O-rings for the uh, water sensor that goes inside of the filter. And then there's also a uh, bleed off valve that you need to put in. It's kind of like a, a brake uh, bleeder. So you'll need those. You should have a little bit of a clear plastic line that you can put on the bleeder so that when you're uh, purging the filter with the electric pump it doesn't spray diesel all over your engine bay. So I recommend you get that. It's pretty small. It's under a quarter of an inch. You should use a uh, E10 socket which is like a, I guess it's an external torx is more or less what it's called. It's not really too common on uh, North American vehicles, but in some places you find them. This has a German engine and transmission in it, so it's got a lot of e-torques on it. Use a 10 millimeter socket for uh, the engine cover and uh, part of the uh, air intake, and then a 7 millimeter as well for the uh, air intake. So I keep the engine cover off on this engine. And uh, also I take the uh, sound deadener off of the cylinders. I've got the one on the uh, passenger side because you have to take the air intake off to get to it. But uh, what you'll find is that if you have all this stuff covering your engine, you can't tell when you've got problems like uh, leaking uh, injectors. So you should have uh, a good bird's eye view on that. Another problem with my vehicle is that it rattled a lot. There's uh, 
two hooks on the back of the engine, and one of them you can see is missing the uh, plastic. So it was always loose when you're driving around. So that was uh, a bit of an issue. So I guess what we'll do right now is we'll take off the uh, filtered air pipe. So you've got your uh, high point of your coolant system is here as well. So you kind of move that out of the way. You don't want to take it off completely. And then I can't remember how I did it the last time. So we'll take off this uh, one here because it's the most distance from the uh, turbo. What may not be apparent is that this uh, pipe here actually has a third tube on it somewhere, which we'll find in a minute. And this uh, tube is actually fairly brittle, so be careful when you're taking it off. You don't want to uh, damage it. So we've got those off. There's a 10 millimeter fitting here by the uh, oil filler. So we'll take that off now. It would have been nice if there was some more consistency in the fasteners on this thing because it, it doesn't make sense. Some of it's it's just all over the place. It's not like it's all 10 millimeter everywhere or E10 everywhere. It's, it's a bit of everything. So that 10 millimeter seems to be a captive. It doesn't come off of there. So just to ease things, I'm going to open the air box. Pull this back. Pull that off. I'll wiggle this out. So you can see there's the uh, third fitting there. When people do some bypasses, this is part of what they're uh, talking about doing. So you'll inspect this, you look inside of it, see if there's any uh, evidence of garbage getting in seems clean it is oily we're going to wipe that off I should bag each end I'm going to do that in a minute next time I get an opportunity to turn off the camera I'm going to just set the air cleaner back down so it's sort of Stays where it belongs. And then we're going to take a look at the turbo. So I just see if we can get the camera in there without too much of a hassle. Bear with me. There's a bit of oil in there, that's not much to be a concern of. So you're looking at the uh, tips of the blades. I would say I can see it a little bit of wear, but they're not all ragged or anything. So we'll just zoom in, see what we can help you see. Help it focus. It's not going to focus. So now what you're going to do, I'm not sure how hot this is, but I'm going to give it a shot, is you just grab the center and try to wiggle it up and down. In fact, I do have a, a bit of play there. I don't know what the spec is, but I would say that we're getting there. It's got a lot of city miles on it, so uh, the mileage is fairly low, but it's had a ton of hours on it to get up to that mileage. You can s see with respect to the uh, fan blade to the housing, you might see some movement. So that uh, 
I'll have to do some research there and see if that's acceptable or not. But it still has enough power for me, so I'm going to run it hard and run it until it's done. So we'll just turn off the camera. I'm going to just cover a few different things and we'll go after the uh, fuel filter. All right, we're back. The camera took a tumble, but it's still half working. Broke the screen on the back and I broke the uh, lens cover on the front, but hey, we still have a camera. This is the uh, third camera that has fallen victim to my YouTube videos. So, anyway, I've got the... Uh, sorry, let me grab the flashlight again. It's tricky to film things here without good lighting. So I've got the uh, electrical connector off the ground. And then I've also got the other bolt off. So you take these fittings here and you kind of flip them backward. They kind of grab onto the fuel lines. But you don't want to lose that into the valley because you'll be struggling to get them back, I would expect. So I've got those two flipped back. And uh, from what I remember, we should be pretty free at this point. Maybe not. No, there's got to be a third one hiding here somewhere. There it is. It's underneath of the uh, overflow line for the uh, fuel injectors. So, uh, pop this camera back. Hopefully it doesn't take another tumble. I'm thinking that it's uh, running out of life now. I guarantee you, if you hit a bump, this filter will not fly out of your engine bay. It is really, it's, it's probably holding the engine together. So you got brackets holding, brackets holding, brackets. That way none of the brackets fall off. We're getting close. So the uh, E torques are all the same size. All right, so now we're getting close. This filter is nice and hot because I've been running the vehicle to get where I'm working. Well, we're gonna do the uh, fuel lines last. Just bear with me while I try to figure out how this electrical connector gets uh, disengaged. I'm gonna just push on the back of it. You probably need a flat screwdriver to push it out. Ah, good. Got that. Looks like there's three wires going into that. Now I put these uh, clamps on. When I got the vehicle originally, it had like uh, one-time use clamps. They were actually like crimped on. So they were, they're not reusable, so these are like high pressure clamps that I put on here for fuel lines. Take the extension off to get that one. Now that I'm looking at it, I need two more tools to do this job, if not three. There is a uh, Allen key that holds in the uh, part of this thing. So I'll pull the fuel lines off. So I need some pliers to break those lines free. So I'll go and get the pliers, I'll be back in a second. All right, so I got the uh, two fuel lines off. You just have to work with them with a pair of needle nose pliers and back them off. The first time you do it, like I said, you need to cut the uh, crimp lines off. And you should follow the lines back to the high pressure pump where my finger is. See if we can use a flashlight or it's just going to make it harder to see. But anyway, there's uh, another fitting at the... Uh, high pressure pump that you should replace that as well because it they're kind of prone to leaking after a while so we'll yank that filter out we'll put it work on it elsewhere oh, 
And we'll take a look uh, inside the valley as well. It's actually pretty hot. I should grab a pair of gloves. And uh, a pail so I can dump it out. Basically, you got to be very careful with this uh, water sensor. There's been many people that have done this job and ended up ruining that thing. And then their vehicle is down for a couple of days and a couple of hundred dollars while you wait for a replacement. So we need to be very careful when they take that off. So there's a pair of uh, T15s holding this on. And there's an Allen head. Like there must have been a comedian that built this thing. So there's an Allen head here. After you get through everything else, they go and change the type of fastener. So I don't know who would do that. The kit doesn't come with any uh, fasteners, so you need to keep those. You will take off the O-rings. Uh, this only turns one way, from what I remember. Yeah, so you turn it that way so that the uh, pieces are facing out. And you're going to work this back and forth very carefully, even if it takes you a day. Doesn't matter how long it takes, because you don't want to break it. And I wouldn't use any tools to push on it very hard either. If you could put a, a flat screwdriver down in here and try to coax it up a little bit, then that's kind of risky. So we probably have to take off that uh, filler port or bleeder port off of here. Yeah, so that's part of the puzzle too. They're freaking crazy when they designed this thing. It's starting to come up a little bit now. It's not easy, but like I said, you can't take any chances. So I guess you've seen me struggle with this uh, long enough. I'm going to turn off the camera. I'm going to get it out. It might take a while to do it, but it's, I can't stress it enough not to uh, rush this step. All right, so I figured out how to get the uh, water sensor or the fuel filter. So I took uh, just a pair of needle nose pliers and I took the tabs that the uh, T, uh, what were they? T15, I think they were. Yeah, the T15 uh, torque screws went into. I grabbed them and bent them over on both sides. And that allowed me to twist this back and forth uh, more than originally. Then you can pull it out and you can just see uh, it's just a pair of prongs that go in and they'll uh, measure if there's any water in there basically. So you need that in order for the, uh, if you break it off it's just not going to work right, Your fuel's going to go around the filter, it's not a good deal. And then it's a uh, five millimeter to do the uh, Allen head here. So I'll do this off camera. So I kind of like using these uh, Milwaukee screwdrivers. They're kind of expensive, but you get like uh, for the Torx, obviously you get one set for that. And then you get a set of metric and a set of Imperial for the Allen keys. And that helps in uh, most cases. So this kit, like I said, it comes with new O-rings for the uh, water sensor. 
they're kind of there's one here and one there so I'll be putting those on and then they give you a new uh, bleeder that goes into the top of the water sensor so I'll get this kind of set up and then we'll uh, start putting it back into place and we'll purge the system just one more thing I noticed that I thought I'd uh, bring to your attention so if you did get water in the filter the way this works is it'll alarm when you get water at this level here and then this tube goes to the bottom of the filter so when you got that alarm you would open that bleeder which goes through and you could shoot the water out so you have to take your engine cover to do that and also need like a pair of needle nose pliers or something to take the bleeder off and if you had that alarm come in I would do that immediately I wouldn't worry about finding a hose to uh, catch the fluid so I now I'll proceed with putting it back together all right, so another thing I talked about was uh, inspecting the valley of the engine to look for any leaks with the uh, oil cooler. So that is the oil cooler there with the uh, QR code on it. But as far as I know, it hasn't been changed on this vehicle. If you look in past it, it doesn't seem to be any oil underneath of it. You can look, kind of peer in on the other side. see part of a gasket there but you can't see anything and this other thing that's in the valley here it's kind of like a round cylinder is actually the uh, swirl motor so if you look down below that fast okay, sorry I pushed a button there so if you look past that mounting fastener just below it there is a, a linkage there so to get this swirl motor out I think you need to take the uh, turbo out and it's a fairly big job it's not something that you could do uh, when the vehicle is uh, just partially apart right now. So a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll opt to put a resistor on that motor. I don't know if they put it on that connector that's right there underneath this towel. But somewhere in here, they'll just put a resistor there to simulate the uh, motor to make it work. The fuel injectors have these uh, the hard lines on them. Then the uh, glow plugs are in here as well. Let me just take a look as to where they're hiding. They're on like the top of the cylinder. So that gray connector there is one of the glow plugs. So that's something I need to do pretty soon. I think that the, the back ones are the hardest to do, especially if you break them off. You take them off using a torque wrench so that you don't overdo it. You don't want to snap one of them off, otherwise you got to order a tool to drill them out. The uh, glow plug controller is right here. It's got a large uh, electrical connector to it. It goes over the engine here. That's uh, the high pressure pump, which I talked about earlier. So uh, at this point, I'm just gonna clean up that hose there, put the fuel filter back in, and then we'll, like I said, we'll start priming it up. All right, so just getting the uh, fuel filter back in, I made a couple discoveries. One is you can get a five millimeter Allen wrench in here to uh, adjust the filter and actually remove it. So that would be uh, something you could consider doing. You just have to take the, uh, the fuel lines off and the uh, electrical connector off. You don't need to do the ground or any of that other stuff. But you'd be careful doing that. You don't want to drop anything in the uh, engine valley. So one thing I discovered was uh, when I replaced the clamps, I did it again this time. It's an 11 to 13 clamp on the small hose and it's a 14 to 16 millimeter clamp on the uh, big hose. The small clamp is pretty tight, it's hard to get on there. And uh, it looks like I didn't cut the uh, fuel lines back the last time I did this. They, uh, but they were in bad shape, they weren't going to make a, a good seal. So this is how much line I cut off. And honestly, it's pretty marginal now getting these lines off. So you should probably have uh, both fuel lines available. The big one down there still has a one-time use uh, clamp on it. And uh, I couldn't quite make it reach all the way. You can see there's like a plastic mark where the line is supposed to finish. That tells you you're uh, well over the uh, end of the uh, line. Couldn't reach it, so this one's hanging on by a thread. The other one I got it on all the way, but it uh, won't be able to cut it off again. When I did the fuel filter the first time on this vehicle, it had the uh, original filter on it. Like I mentioned, I had to cut the uh, lines off. 
So they really didn't give you very much extra rubber for this job. You might be able to cut off like half a width of a, a band clamp to put that back on. When you're putting in, let's take the Allen key out of the way so I don't lose it. This knob here, it's tight going all the way in for some reason. I don't know why. It was the same way with the last one. I tried to lubricate it a little bit and it doesn't help a whole lot. So I'm going to just finish putting that in, but I wanted to just make a note of this. And uh, I keep talking about it, but we're going to purge this thing eventually here, so we're getting pretty close now. Alright, so I got a 3 16 clear line into the uh, bleeder fitting. Just going to jump in the Jeep here and uh, cycle the key and see if we can fill up this uh, bottle of diesel. So if we do that, we'll know that we've purged the uh, fuel filter and make it quite a bit easier to start the Jeep. I remember this taking a fairly long time the first time around as well. I don't see any uh, fuel leakage. So I'm just trying to determine uh, if that pump is cycling or not. I seem to remember it eventually working. start the vehicle right now because the uh, cloth will get sucked up into the turbo and that will be uh, ruined immediately. So that's been four minutes now we've been trying to do this so I'm kind of 
surprised it's taking as long as it is, but we're going to take our time to get it right. We're not going to risk any disasters. We're not going to get impatient. We'll try to understand what's happening though. So open on a couple more turns. Like I said, the turbo will get spun by the exhaust and get suck up that cloth so you don't crank your engine. Or at this point you could remove uh, the cover. So let's turn this back a bit more. It's not very easy to get a hold of. They've put like a 12 point socket tip on it. But I don't know, it's not that easy to grab onto. We're pretty far out now. So pop in again and see how we're doing. Persistence and patience have paid off. Got half a, a bottle there. I think that's enough. So now I'm just going to take this off here and uh, try to do it while there's still fuel in the line so that it doesn't suck any air in. siphon a bit so we just uh, pull that out I'll put this on the cloth catch that there so now I'm gonna button up the intake here clean off that tube that had been leaking oil and uh, we'll try to start up the Jeep all right so just putting this uh, tube back on here there's a little rubber bump on the uh, grommet on this side and then there's a void on the other side you can't see it here but there's a, a matching indexing spot on the opposite side of the tube so you got to get those lined up and if you do that everything should be good to go all right so i guess i got everything put back together i'm standing clear of the engine i'm just going to hold down the interlock on the hood so i can use the uh, remote start and we'll see how long it takes to fire up Right, so that was pretty uneventful. Everything uh, is running here pretty good. We don't have any surging or any air in the lines. So I think that worked out pretty good. I'm just gonna let go of the interlock here and then that turns off the engine. If you ever want to child proof uh, your vehicle and disable the uh, remote start, you just disconnect the wire connected to this and your, your remote start won't work anymore. So, uh, Hopefully uh, this video was valuable to you and uh, thank you for watching.